All right, everyone. Uh, well, it should be going back up live. I'm going to test this one more time. Um, just waiting for the League People stream on the right to kick off. And, yep, it looks like we're having activity, so let's just get underway. Uh, the quality's turned up quite high. Or maybe it's... Oh, there we go. Okay, it's not a black screen anymore. Good, good, good. Okay, so welcome to the stream, everyone. This is Jacob Allen, a.k.a. Counter Clockwork, a.k.a. The Guardian Angel. Or, should I say, Guardian Angel. So, without any introduction or anything else, you guys know who I am. Let's just get into this game and start uh, commentating the best that I can. I hope you guys enjoy. The quality is set up to 720p with 60 FPS, so it's quite high. Not all internet... Um, Plans may support this, and you might get laggy and choppy. However, the the goal is to make a good quality stream and good recording for the people who are playing the game at the moment, not necessarily for the viewers 100%. So, yes. As we can see, the score already. Blue team is 2.7k gold ahead of red team. No towers taken. A oh, one tower taken. Top. Or maybe that's, is that a bug? No, mid lane is down. <laughs> Excuse me, you guys. Mid lane is down, and there are no dragons taken. Um, ooh, bot lane going in really hard. Or not. Oh, Nami with that exhaust. High speed. Look at that. They're both afraid of the Sivir with no man. Oh, and they should have been afraid of her. Wow. Dorvalana going down and Caitlyn there with that one Q from Sivir with the boomerang blade. Amazing. That's what happens when you're out of mana. Might have been the cost of rushing that early sight stone as opposed to the chalice or anything else with mana regen. If we look at their items at the moment, Malphite actually rushing for tr uh, that lit that Sheen um, might be going for Iceborne Gauntlet. Actually, not a bad idea. As far as their farm goes, roughly even, only four ahead on Malphite. <laughs> Ballabear Wukong in the jungle doing roughly the same. Ballabear doing more effective, and ooh, damn! Look at that! Look at that mid lane! Holy crap, Daggers. guys! Did you see that? Did you see that? Nidalee is not OP at all, everyone. Do not email Riot telling her, them to nerf her. Oh, and the, and, oh, look at that. Look at that. Come on, everyone. Oof. Very smart decision going for Lich Bane early on. Most people seem to have forgotten about hybrid picks in general and just seem to focus on the hybrid items, even though they're not going to build the champion as a full hybrid. Although, Lich Bane, definitely a very, very strong first pick. 96 farm on Nidalee, 46 on TF with three deaths. Not looking very good. Uh, I don't very much agree with him rushing into Sheen. That's not... I don't, I don't know if he was doing that so he could rush into uh, a Lich Bane as well, which isn't a terrible item, and, but it's only really effective if you're going to use your ult and gank other lanes early on. So, Not sure how I feel about that. Here we go, guys. Uh, <laughs> Nidalee starting to get the pounding. Oh, and there's Wukong for the finish. Not sure if Malphite... Did Malphite use Teleport? No, he did not. Actually, that's a very good roam from him, then. wonder if he just wanted that booty. Oh, here we go. Sivir's just so solo landing this. Where's Soraka? Is that is that Jakaterina right there? I can't really see the names at the moment. However, yeah. Sorry about that, then. I think that's my own settings, not theirs. <laughs> TF with the ult, just scanning where everyone is. Find Sivir. Everyone's scared of Sivir, so no one goes for her. Let me fix these. There's the names. And there's the minions. Okay, now we have it all restored. Alright, Catherine finally getting back in the game. That level 1 Soraka with the full sight stone. Some potions and a pink ward and boots. Very nice. Still hasn't selected an ability. But who needs them? Who needs an ability? I don't need an, abil an ability. Come on. While they're biting that goddamn crab. The goddamn... That goddamn crab. Still no dragons taken, even though it's free reigns right now, you would expect for red team. But with that that Nidalee getting fed and just pounding middle lane with the four kills and 100 farm, 50 farm over TF, you can't be too surprised that they'd be very afraid to commit to that. Uh, Cheshire 69 cat they did pause the game however it went through the full rotation of what I believe is like a 30 minute maximum time to wait oh okay Wukong going in on Soraka down here Ooh, kind of surprising he didn't get her that's only 680 health on Soraka twice you know double the amount on Wukong right there so uh well well, well then um but yeah they did pause the game and it went through the whole entire thing as I said yeah, okay they are still winning even with the AFK 
Says a lot. Oh, Volibear going down there. That passive rolling, but it's still not being enough to save him. Are they considering getting the dragon? He's very low on mana, but he's got enough health. Oh, no. They're going for the Soraka. They want that level 1 gold. 300 full gold, even though she was level 1. It's enough gold for a full, fresh kill. Nearly with a full spear right there on, on uh, Nami. Oh, getting the second. Two kills. Damn, son. Damn. Ooh, spear the clone. She, she's not buying it. She ain't buying it. She wants the real one. She doesn't buy fake crap. There we go. Triple kill from Nidalee on that list, though. Man. 7 and 2. Doing amazing with that one item. Lich Bane is all she needs. And is she going to get the TF? She is going to get the... Ooh, nope. A flash from TF. <laughs> Red card salute. Here we go. Ooh, oof. Red, oh, ouch. Will she make it out? No, she will not. So... It would have been better for TF if he did have the gold card. But nonetheless, he did at least get something out of it and play... Well enough, at least it would. <laughs> if it was the blue card, we obviously all know what what would have happened right there. Just a casual top lane, you know, rocking a bard place up here, because there's no bard. And uh, looks like he's going for Trinity Force as opposed to Iceborne. That's actually not a very smart decision. Although Malphite can work very well as an AD, but given his situation, I don't know if that's really going to be the best. His team. Seems like they're really going to need a tank since Malphite is, is pretty much the only candidate right now. Wukong is going to be tanky from his passive with the stone skin, but it does not look like he's planning to build that since it, he has uh, the pickaxe and the current Trailblazer Warrior buff on his uh, jungle enchantment. Ooh, Nasus getting jumps top lane. He pulls out the ult. Doesn't look like he's going to make it out. Wukong is just spinning until he de deletes and just forms the Large Hadron Collider <laughs> and deletes him. Nice dodge from the cards on Nidalee with that little two second jump. <laughs> Ooh, another weird pickup from Nami going for that tier of the goddess. Not the pick I would highly recommend, though I do definitely agree that she needs a mana, uh, some sort of mana regen item, so it could go to use. However, given their situation that they're losing lane, and she's just. They're not in a very good place to be weak, weaker early on than they already are. Ooh. Malph, a very good Wukong clone, very nicely timed, even though he was losing the trade there. But then Malphite comes in with the ult and just just pounds her. Hit, ooh, he already had the full Trinity Force built, so he's actually going to be dealing more damage with those procs than Nidalee. And using getting the synergy from his W, giving him that AD. So, very nice job. Is it worth the ult? That's, that's, that's the ult, the, you know, the age grand question. Is it worth? And the question is, it's always worth my English skills, amazing, right? I know. The question is, it's always worth. Whew. How are we looking on the farm bot lane? 129 farm on Sivir to 76 on Caitlyn. Not looking very good for them at all in this case. And Caitlyn is kind of going in between two builds. Looks like she's going to build up the pick up the Berserker Greaves on the boots with that, uh, with that dagger she bought right there. But only has the BF sword, which we can only assume is going to be built for the Infinity Edge. Bloodthirster is a viable pick. But I would not suggest so when you're losing, because in middle game and late game, your damage is going to be very lackluster compared to uh, the enemy ADC, especially when they've already picked up the full Infinity Edge. So on Malphite, I mean uh, on Nasus, we can already see that he's pick, picked up Spirit Visage. Uh, not a good pick. It is it is a good pickup because it'll synergize with his passive and. Um, you know, he's going to be very sustaining in lane, as you can see right there. One Q gives him roughly 100 health every hit. Uh, however, Malphite is still building AD, and I wonder if that was something he planned on doing, or if he's just doing it because he was building Magic Resist. Right, Malphite needs to commit. He's got that Trinity Force. He's got his AD roll. Uh, oops, he's got the movement speed rolling. Um, if he had his ultimate right now, he could probably go in for the kill, but not looking like it's going to be very easy. Oh, no, he's going for it, and then, my, oh, no, 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 okay, never mind, never mind. The Kane is rolling his, he's blowing his ultimate up, and <laughs> Malphite is not in very good conditions to fight this out, although he has that biscuit. He has the lucky biscuit of winning duels, but is he going to use it? Will he remember? Oh, he used the biscuit. He's going to win the duel, guys. Here we go. Looks like, okay, nope, he's just going to walk away, everyone. It, it is all right, though, and, um... Yeah. Oh, well, no less. Uh, Malphite, I mean, uh, Nasus does not have any potions left on his Crystalline Flask, and he's also very low on mana. Malphite has enough, and looks like, will his ultimate be up in time? His ult is up, while TF is about to probably pop his ult, 
which it also is up. So we'll see, uh, is this synergy from, you know, ABC here gonna pop? Nope, he's just gonna, oh, there's the Malphite ult, like we were planning. Malphite's way too low, though. If he stays in, he's very, ooh, no, he's gonna just kite in the bushes. Very smart decision, actually. But I was about to say, he was very low, and he would have been easily risking his death. TF doesn't have enough damage to kill Nasus, so all that for nothing. Nidalee coming up top, will, will she get, nope, she's not, ooh, maybe she will. Very good fake out there. I'm not sure if that was lag or just some, uh, some sneaky, Sneaky skeleton strategies. Oh, she's hitting the TF. Ouch. Almost all of his health. Nice flash from TF, but Nidalee is way too fast for this. And she's... Oh, is she going to get the second pickup? Looks like... It. Yep, she is. She is. Tr God dang, everyone. Nidalee is very overpowered. Nidalee is very overpowered. Ooh, very nice spear onto Caitlyn. Extremely nice save from Wukong, though, with the reaction. That was well thought out and well done. Nami flashing away from the three that were randomly piling up mid lane. Apparently no one had any idea what was going on. They were all just watching Caitlyn and Nidalee, I'm sure. Because that, that is where the show was going on. Nidalee picking up the kill on Wukong as he just didn't have his clone up in time, I guess. Not, oh, not, wow. Nami throwing out the tidal wave, but not enough to save her. Didn't get it off in time, so Nidalee closed the distance first. Blue team just taking the tower down like they don't even care. Valber doesn't have to pa pop his passive. He doesn't even have armor. But you know what? It doesn't even matter. He's got health, and that's all that matters. He's doing what he can with what he can. Nidalee going in once again. She misses the spear, and even then takes Caitlyn down 90% of her health. Hits Malphite. Does no damage whatsoever. Also, oh, <laughs> wow. This is getting crazy, everyone. This, well, what can you say? This is getting crazy. Yeah. Let's see what Malphite has to do. Uh, his ult's going to be up roughly in about 10-15 seconds-ish. Uh, TF still has his ultimate, however, Nami is just returning back to base from the spawn. Uh, <laughs> Nami's right there, and uh, Caitlyn is just returning back to base from uh, their spawn because she just hit it back from that 90% spear. Nilly's somewhat low on mana, but she does have the chalice, so not like it, not, it won't matter, everyone. It will not matter. Uh, Nami did, as a matter of fact, ult on Born Valkyrie. Nearly being taken down by the Malphite. I didn't quite pay attention to that, but it looks like the Malphite ulted and then just blew her up with his his fresh young T Trinity Force from the Rock. TF blowing his ult did not see Soraka backing right there. However, uh, Valbear and Sivir both in the area. They know Wukong's going on the goose hunt. However, he's going to be spotted by that pink ward. Very bad positioning. He needs to take that out immediately or else they can take advantage of him using his clone to kill him. Red team pushing down mid lane. We've seen Volibear jumping back, throwing the Caitlyn, destroying him as Sivir is critting her face off. TF looks like he's not going to make it out. Nami has the, the slow, but TF's not going to make use of it on TF. Ah, just very good bubble from Tushori over here. Um, oh, well, that seemed unnecessary, but hey, she was, she was afraid. She was afraid, what can you say? Mobility boots kicking off. Nami is back to the ocean. And if we look, Caitlyn has finished her Infinity Edge, so she does have damage and actually equal items, surprisingly, at the moment, uh, as Sivir. However, clearly not the same amount of farm, with Sivir having 75 more on Caitlyn. So as soon as she backs, it looks like she, looking like she's going to have a full Phantom Dancer or Static Shift, depending on what she decides to build. Nidalee just roaming up, like saying she doesn't care what your team is, and clearly she can because she just deletes the Caitlyn, uh, missing her first her second spear there, coming for TF or Nami. I guess she was expecting for one of them to roam into it. So, like, probably a mistake I would make personally. TF going up with the gold card, no one to back him up, so he's just backing away. You're not that much of a player in that suit. Nasus just continuing to push down the lane. How many farm? How much farm does Nasus have? Uh, 429 damage on Siphoning Strike for Nasus. Given the time that is 23 minutes into the game, that is very huge. Typically, we're gonna, we're, you know, you see people going on Nasus near practically almost 1,000 on Siphoning Strike near the end game level. And this is almost, this is hardly the mid game we've reached. So, Nasus is going to just take that red buff. Wukong saying, I don't like that. I want my red buff. Too bad. He got his death. Malphite walking away. He does He does have his ult. He's trying to preserve it so he doesn't have to waste it. But it looks like he's going to. Yep, there he has to use it. Caitlyn using the, the net. Hitting. Oh, almost, almost. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm out of breath here. Nice gold card from TF. Looks, is that going to be enough? No, Soraka ult coming out. Here's Caitlyn. Yep, head, headshot. She doesn't miss. She killed them. 
I guess Sivir didn't want to flash, or maybe no one was close enough. Well, either way, they got the cat. The cat is is no longer here, and uh, that's 16 kills of gold worth on the enemy team that is dead now. So will red team be able to take advantage of this? And it's also not looking like it. They're not rotating to their bottom lane, so this tower is free. The minions were pushing. They're not paying any attention, it seems like. At top lane, Nasus is still slowly pushing. Malphite's coming to pay attention to that, and it looks like he... I think he will be able to stop him. However, we have four bottom, and... Oh, Wukong's coming into the ult. Very nice Nami ult on the tidal wave. Wukong almost deleting Sivir, but she barely lived, likely from the heal from Soraka or her spell shield. Everyone running away. TF has his ult up. Is he going to teleport? Here comes the teleport, everyone. Ooh, he hit the gold card, but not enough time to close in onto the Soraka or Sivir. Balabar saying he's a martyr for a good cause and dying anyways, however. With his, with his third death, and whew, what a good bear. I would hug that teddy bear, wouldn't you guys? Wukong, Wukong and Nami roaming down bot lane, coming down, oh, but the Sivir is just way too fed right now. On top of the fact that there was three of them, why would you tower dive? That is a terrible decision, although I under totally agree with them trying to get picks, but not very smart to go under an enemy tower, even if it's tier 1, 25 minutes into the game. We all know the rules, guys. Just don't tower dive. Malphite walking in does have his ultimate up. He's doesn't have much items left. Looks like he's approaching a Sunfire Cape once he's on his next back after if they do acquire a kill. Not sure how much good that's going to do him. He does have a lot of built-in armor to synergize with the health to block through Malphite going in. Wukong getting the ult. Look at that. Just melting them both. They were That was very well played, taking advantage of the fact that they were overextended. They can clearly see Soraka's there. They can clearly see Nasus just farming up top, even though that's still not a great thing they should also still be trying to react to. Nasus at the moment with 513 on his siphoning strike, slowly building them up. We're about to see one more. And there we go. It's one more. Malphite roaming up. Going to try to stop him. No, you, you can leave. You can leave. I'm just going to have my farm. Soraka picking up that farm. Look at that. Well needed farm. Wukong trying to close in on the Soraka. He has the blue buff. He will have Skolona very shortly, even on top of this. The silence coming up from Soraka, but not enough to get the stun off. Could have been well more well timed. The, the Frost Queen's claim going down on Wukong. And here comes the Nami bubble. The pain train has begun. Welcome to the sex dungeon of known as Nami's bubble. Sorry to see that, Soraka. You had a rough start. 0-2-4, oh, and four, however, that's not very bad, all things considered. I think that's good item rush, going for the Chalice and the Frost Queen's Claim, so you can pick up more gold. However, lane phase being over makes it where Frost Queen's Claim isn't very effective, since you're not more commonly going to be attacking enemies, or uh, and because of the handicap on it, being uh, once you kill a minion, you, it only gives you that one uh, little time window to get the gold. I feel like Ancient Coin may have been better for her team, although the disengage, considering how heavy their engages are, isn't also a bad idea. Something to consider to stop to try and stop that Wukong from going in on you. Although it's not going to also, but although it will not stop this Malphite from coming in with a Trinity Force and almost getting destroyed, that Nami bubble coming out. Is he going to dodge the spear? He dodges the spear. Ooh, boomerang Blade coming down, just poking Nami in the tail right there. Blue Trinket coming out from the blue team. Nidalee going in. Didn't, she didn't even land the spear. She just flash pounced into the TF and take, took him out. Oh my god, that was painful. Wow, they really need to deal with this Nidalee. Nice bubble from Nami. Not going to matter though. The, the Lich Bane uh, proc is just going to delete her. This game is not going well. Here comes Wukong just trying to sneak his way in. Oh, not a very sneaky monkey. Didn't, didn't you know? Malphite coming in. He's got his ultimate. Is he, are they going to go? Are they going to do this? It does not look like they're going to do this. Sivir's got a lot of damage on top of the fact that not the, the Nidalee is just incredibly powerful at the moment with 20 kills. She also has her death cap finished, so it's just not looking good for them. There's the... Nidalee just killed the entire enemy team, everyone. This is crazy. This is crazy. Oh, man. Sivir finishing the Static Shiv and having a BF Sword and a uh, Vampiric Scepter. Go definitely going for the Bloodthirster. Not a bad decision. You get a lot more damage. Even harder crits being hit. So, and harder to kill, of course, with that lifesteal. Wildbird tipping up the second dragon. Now they have the 15% tower damage built, uh, 
15% damage to tower and building, so these last two towers and this nexus are going to be incredibly easy. If Nidalee gives the attack speed buff to Sivir, then it's just... Oh, and she does. She does. What a very smart and good teammate. Clearly, as we can tell with the 21 deaths, she is very smart indeed. Ooh, Wukong coming in with the home guard boost. Pops his ultimate, only knocks up Soraka, trying to turn back in after it gets exhausted from the very same Soraka. Does not get much off, but they killed. They do finish off Soraka. Getting some damage in and lifesteal from his Q and the well-needed uh, hit on Sivir. Nasus just pulling in with over probably likely 600, almost 600 damage on his Q. Withers the, oh wow, Withers the Caitlyn, destroys her. Sivir getting hit with the TF card, not paying much attention. Could have dodged, but that's what happens. Tunnel vision, everyone, everyone has it. TF with that gold card ready. He feels the, the Vol bear getting ready to come in and try to dive. Nasus just life seals back to full health immediately, pushing one single wave. Not even a surprise at all. Malphite going in saying, I don't care. You can't touch a rock. There is no rock smash in this game. This ain't Pokemon. Hits him with one Q, auto attack, and pops his E, but doesn't really do much. Wukong coming in once again with the home card, destroying Volibear with his whole team. Very nicely done. Volibear trying to commit so he can get the second tower, but not enough. Malphite following Lassus, although it doesn't look like he's going to have enough damage. I don't know what he's doing. He doesn't really have enough armor either to survive this. I don't think anyone does at this point in the game. As we can see, Nami has upgraded to the Archangel Staff. However, it's only at 500 out of 750 sacks. I doubt it will be uh, hit to the... I doubt it's going to be hit... All the way up to uh, the cap. Sorry, guys, I was pausing because I was reading the comments. <laughs> uh, the person playing Nidalee at the moment is Datlisdo. I do not know the ELOs of this game. Uh, you can ask Peter Gomez and Idney, which it looks like they have just le linked. The oh, ve <laughs> very, very close dodge. Nidalee's saying they want the tower. They're getting the tower because she has enough AP to just one-shot it. And it looks like the red team has finally surrendered. I think we all saw this coming, everyone, and it's not a surprise. When you look at these gold values here, blue team was up 12,000 gold and two dragons. 11 towers. That is just insane. Uh, and all that happened, even with the Soraka being AFK for the first portion of the game. While it wasn't very much, that is definitely not an advantage for the enemy team. You know, for, for your allied team. And even then, they pulled through and won the game. So very good job for blue team. Uh, I believe your name is Damn Dat Team, though. So very good job. You guys have been doing very well in this tournament, and keep it up, Red Team. You know what to do. You guys were doing okay, Wukong. I feel like you were a very good player. Uh, the Nami wasn't bad, bad either, but there were a lot of questionable builds on Blue Team here. Caitlyn ru ru uh, not rushing for the Infinity Edge and deciding. Well, she did rush. Okay, so I'm not going to comment on that. TF rushing for the Lich Bane when he's struggling in lane is not a very good idea. Trinity Force and all Sheen proc items in general are typically meant to pressure your early game advantage. And um, it's just not a very smart decision. He knew he was losing lane. Nilly was 4-0 and at the time, and then they slowly picked it up. Malphite with the Trinity Force, it was interesting. He actually pulled it off very well. Uh, can't say much about it, you know, he, uh, if anything, um, if you could see the damage recap after this game, I'm sure he would have his, him, uh, way up there, very up there, but, you know, guys, it isn't very good, but you know what, he pulled it off, and, uh, I think the biggest problem was resistances, and the fact that that Nidalee, just, you can't stop her, you gotta, you gotta they had to, the only way they would have won is if they learned to dodge. Ooh. But even after a certain point, Nidalee was just able to flash, uh, pounce in, and come in for kills with no problem whatsoever, taking advantage of the Fuhrer boot, uh, boot enchantment, and just all of her mobility in mind. So, Alright everyone, so I don't know when the next game is going to start. I'm going to close out this game now. Uh, we will be streaming, and I'm going to keep the stream up with my volume muted until we can get that back up and confirmation that there will be another match. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you do enjoy, or did enjoy, the game might... The stream actually will...